Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Committed Critics, a pop culture podcast where not only committed to our opinions, but also each other. Aww. Aww. I'm Kevin Lau. I'm Ryan Davis. I am Zachary Wright. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Jordan. <laughs> they, they got Zach. <laughs> He's one of them. <laughs> they got the poop on the robot. <laughs> uh, today we're talking scored, about... Scored. As you can probably tell from the title and thumbnail, today we are talking about Chat GPT, specifically having Chat GPT write two scripts for us. Um, th- currently, what we are doing right now, uh, Chat GPT has now no involvement in. We're doing our normal normal stuff, uh, but uh, we will transition into a, tr- a Chat GPT episode in just a moment. You mean tell me um, that SpongeBob line wasn't scripted? No, it wasn't. Man, Surprising imagine show. if it was. <laughs> you th- you think an AI is is cultured enough to watch SpongeBob without Dude, if an du- AI, killing itself? <laughs> if an AI can throw in a SpongeBob reference, game over. We're nuking it. <laughs> done. I can't. I'm replaced. <laughs> That's my old shit. <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, for those of you who don't know what chat GPT is, it is a language <coughs> learning AI, uh, developed by open AI. And it's also like has major, uh, funding from Microsoft as of right now as well. Um, chat GPT does not actually know anything outside of the information programmed into it. Cause it's, th- it's not connected to the internet. Uh, the information it's fed is up until September, 2021 as of right now. Um, Mm. And it is not an AI in the sense where it can think for itself. Um, it, it is more of a, uh, uh, for, for, for more techie people, it's like more of a JavaScript program um, where you have to input information and then it reacts to that information with its own uh, algorithm. Right. Um, yeah, so basically it's an algorithm that has learned and is still learning how to read words and calculate the best response based on its current understanding of the language. Um. So, so, you know, it's it doesn't actually like feel or know anything. It's just more like based on my understanding of the language, here's the best word that comes next to create a sentence. And I think it does a really good job. It's very, very powerful. Um, however, like don't trust everything it says because a lot of the information it gets wrong. Uh, for starters, I was surprised to actually, and, you know, there, there was information in it about committed critics. However, the information was wrong. <laughs> our names no. were wrong for the entirety of it. It was great. Yeah. Wait, no. how, how badly were our names? Uh, so, uh, so, so I asked Chad GPT of, hey, can you give me information about the podcast Committed Critics? And he says, yes. Uh, Committed Critics is a podcast that focuses on in-depth discussions and analysis of films, TV shows, and other forms of media. The podcast is hosted by three hosts, Nick, Al, and Sam. <laughs> what? <laughs> who are passionate about cinema and share their thoughts and opinions on various topics related to the movies and TV shows. I don't um, know who is who. And I don't know I, if Sam is Jordan or Sam is me. <laughs> uh, you, you, look, I... You're one into two. I'm calling dibs Al. on Al. No, I want Al. <laughs> I guess I'm Nick then. <laughs> we'll both be Al. Al one, Al two. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it goes on to say that the podcast has covered a wide range of topics, including discussions of popular franchises like the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Star Wars, as well as reviews of independent and foreign films. Uh, the hosts often bring a critical and thoughtful perspective into their discussions, examining not only the surface level aspects of the films show- and shows, but also delving into the themes, messages, and symbolism at play. Um, so I, I love our. I, think- I love when you asked each men- member, and I gave a description of each member. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I did. So I corrected ChatGPT saying like, oh, the correct here's the correct names. Um, and then I asked for like how what information it had on each host. Let me see if I can find that. I have it, I have it right here. You ready? Oh, yeah. Kevin has a strong passion for movies and is often often the one to bring up interesting topics for the group to discuss. Kevin's opinions and insights are always valued by the other hosts. And he is known for his ability to break down complex concepts in an accessible way, which you do. Mm-hmm. Oh, Overall, thanks. Kevin is a key member of the Community Critics team and plays an important role in making the podcast an engaging and listening in, or entertaining listen. Mm-hmm. Zach is known for his thoughtful analysis and his ability to express his opinions in a clear and articulate manner. As I say, as I'm reading this at fucking light speed and can barely articulate this call. <laughs> he brings a lot of knowledge and insight to the discussions, often discussing the technical aspects of filmmaking and offering a unique perspective on the movies and TV shows they review. All right, Ryan is, all right. Ryan is known for his sense of humor and his ability to find the humor in even the most serious of topics. That's fair. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> He's a great storyteller and often brings interesting an- anecdotes and personal experiences to the discussion. Ryan also has a great eye for detail and is able to pick up on sub- subtleties and nuances that other hosts may have missed. I think that's referencing like how you always have hot takes. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> nope, maybe. I, I'm taking no, that as I details. Am. He's very little Thank details, you. but I think I think the I think it's reading it as like because we th- all think similar way and Ryan oh. like likes to have the uh, like differing opinion. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Hey, then, I'll take it. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> chip, chip, chat, chat. <laughs> Jordan is known for his encyclopedic, encyclopedic <laughs> knowledge of movies and TV shows. She has a deep understanding of film history and is able to draw on his on this knowledge to offer valuable insights and context to the discussion. Jordan is also known for their sharp wit and their ability to challenge the other hosts in a playful, entertaining way. That's fair. Are you yeah. a he or she? It sounded like it, you went both. No, so, I corrected no, it. It, it, was he. No, it was he. Yeah, it yeah. said he. Uh, they, yeah, they interpret Jordan as a he. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know Jordan had an encyclopedic cy- knowledge of uh, movies and TV shows. That's amazing. I mean, she's I, seen more movies and TV shows than I have. Hiding, I played more video talent. games. Oh. <laughs> kind of. Oh, snap. Technically. So Jordan's the real nerd and Zach's fake. Mm-hmm. Zach's fake. Zach's trying to be Jordan. <laughs> I want to be. Zach is chat GBT. <laughs> Well, guys, this is our episode of Among Us. It, it makes sense, though. Zach's that, the imposter. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes sense why it's September 2021, because I asked ChatGPT about Bluebell, mm-hmm. and Bluebell uh-huh. didn't happen until January of 2022. Mm. So Correct. that it was like, what is Bluebell? I don't know any of this. Like, it gave me the flour. It gave me, like, a baking. Oh, what baking is. Yeah. So, yeah. That makes more sense now. I mean, I was actually surprised that, it, like, it knew, like... I guess it just knew enough about committed critics to like have an answer, even if it's not the correct answer. Like it had an answer in its system. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's why I didn't know Jordan because Jordan wasn't completely on the podcast until after 2021. That's true. Right. I uh, guess so. Yeah. Um, it actually, so I, and it actually like, uh, apparently I'm a public enough figure that like it knew, it kind of knew who I was and was diff- able to differentiate me from the, uh, Kevin Lau that works at HBO. Oh, um, oh damn. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah, uh, it, my main credit that it knows me for is Final Summer, which uh, <laughs> is kind of a... I hate to see it. I <laughs> hate to see it, but who? But uh, it's, uh, it's the one I'm trying to get my name off of. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, move on I'll to the it. script. <laughs> <laughs> to save Kevin from this conversation. <laughs> yeah, so here, so we're going to... So here's the script for the that uh, ChatGPT wrote for us. The episode title is Superheroes Through the Years, Examining the Evolution of the Genre. <laughs> Introduction. The music plays. Da, 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 da. Hello and welcome to Committed Critics, the podcast where we explore the world of film and TV with passion and insight. Hang on, pause. Full stop. That's a way better <laughs> opening than we actually have. <laughs> <laughs> but I like our own. That's, sh- that's our whole shtick. I don't, well, I don't know. I'm, we're gonna steal. I'm gonna steal a lot from Jet, Chat GPT for this. <laughs> <clears throat> Today, we're diving into the world of superheroes and examining how the genre has evolved over time. From the golden age of superheroes <laughs> to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we'll be exploring how the portrayal of superheroes reflects our society's values and expectations. So buckle up <laughs> and get ready for an epic journey <laughs> through the history of the superhero genre. Segment, segment one, one, the golden age of superheroes. The superhero genre, as we know today, wouldn't exist without the golden age of superheroes in the 1930s and 1940s. Characters like Superman, Batman, Captain America capture the imagination of readers with their superhuman abilities in colorful costumes. But these early superheroes weren't just about action and adventure. They also reflected the values and anxieties of the time. The patriotic fervor of World War II, (laughs) the fear of nuclear war, and the desire for justice and equality were all reflected in the stories of these early superheroes. No, they weren't. Jordan just sounds like a genius. (laughs) The real singer at the end. That's what I'm saying. That's what that's what I'm saying. Like it doesn't know who Jordan is, so just giving her the things that like is associated. (laughs) Consider this my audition for Watch Mojo, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Segment two, the rise of the anti-hero. By the 1980s and 1990s, the superhero genre had taken on a darker and more complex tone. Characters like Batman and Wolverine struggled with inner demons and moral ambiguity, <laughs> challenging traditional notions of heroism. Why didn't Ryan read this one? What? <laughs> this is definitely a Ryan line. <laughs> 
No, I, I say no, no, no. these anti-heroes no, spoke to a new generation of fans who are looking for characters who are flawed and relatable, which is a very Ryan That's line. a very <laughs> Ryan sorry. thing to say about anti-heroes. <laughs> And the success of these anti-heroes paved the way for the darker and grittier superhero stories we see today. I just had a realization. Hang on. I don't really like the way that I said that line. It's fine. I just had a realization. Go again? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Take two. And the success of these anti-heroes paved the way for the darker and grittier super sto- superhero stories we see today. Okay. That's and fine. Uh, take three. <laughs> As you were saying, Zach. This is fine. Have you guys realized what's going on here? We're just each saying well, yeah, one they, yeah. This is giving us one line each, and then going to the no. next segment. No, 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 no. Each segment is but sans Jordan because this was because she wasn't like one of the three the cast members until like after twenty twenty one. But each of these segments is reflective of how the three of us are stands on superheroes. Kevin, you reference like the history and like the lore behind like like the comics oh. and like and like it just reference anti heroes in segment two, which is more Ryan's shtick. Mm-hmm. And like the darker, more ambiguity. And now I'm about to go into segment three, which is the MCU, which is what more I'm akin to. <laughs> I, just, I just wrap it this up. This is fucking genius, end. actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrifying, actually. Segment three, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In 2008, the Marvel Cinematic Universe kicked off with Iron Man. And it has, and it has since become one of the most successful film franchises in history. Did that hurt to read, Kevin? It did hurt to read. <laughs> <laughs> the MCU has redefined the superhero genre, creating a shared universe that has captivated audiences around the world. But the MCU isn't just about action adventure. It's also addressed important <laughs> social issues such as race and gender rest- representation. Oh, sure, Jan. Oh, I'm really glad Ryan read that one. Not sure, Jan. <laughs> no, I was about to say, I'm like, where? <laughs> Black Panther and Captain Marvel. <laughs> that's, that's, that's about it. it. Miss that, Marvel, it. full stop. <laughs> And its impact on the industry as a whole can't be overstated. The success of the MCU has <laughs> paved the way for other shared universes, such as the DC Extended Universe and the Universal Monsters Universe. Oh, that which died after dies. two movies. <laughs> Love that. Oh, the fact that oh, those are dead. The monster like, very universe. Much dead. It yeah. died to the first movie. It didn't even get no, out. No, there was, was the no, it was I Frankenstein. No, I Dracula and The Mummy. Those were the two movies. Was I Dracula one of them? Yes. Oh, I thought I started with The oh. Mummy. I thought so too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure maybe, it was The Mummy. You know, maybe, no, you know what? I think you're right. I think it was. Oh, yeah, it is The Mummy. It was, it was The Mummy who had started it and then it was going to go into The Invisible Man. But then they scrapped the original plan for Invisible Man and made it what it came out as now. Like that like horror like thriller movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Invisible yeah. Man, actually, that Invisible Man, I think, is from a different studio uh, because Got Invisible it. Man is a uh, public domain Got it. IP. Okay. Either Segment way. Segment for the future of the superhero genre. <laughs> so where does the superhero genre go from here? Will audiences tire of the formula or continue to evolve and push boundaries? Just answering a question with a question, but okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> filmmakers and storytellers face... Both challenges and opportunities as they continue to explore the world of superheroes. But one thing is certain. The superhero genre is here to stay. Is Ooh, it? I got two lines. Conclusion. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for today. We hope you've enjoyed this exploration of the evolution of the superhero genre. And we hope it's giving you some insight into how the portrayal of superheroes reflects our society's value and expectations. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Be sure to tune in next time for more insights into the world of film and TV. Until then, stay committed to your passions and keep exploring the world of storytelling. That's a good one. I like Uh, that one. Stay committed, guys. That's where Jordan just like snaps, looks in the camera. Stay committed. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, what you guys think of that relationship with every TV show, every movie, every video game? I definitely, (laughs) and I'm gonna say this at the very end. It definitely, it nailed the content, uh, and I just pointed out, it nailed the three-segment thing, but, like, uh-huh. those three segments are reflective of our op- opinions. I don't mm-hmm. think there's enough information in, ja- in chat GPT to reference Jordan. I don't think Jordan is as accurate uh-huh. as the three of us are, and that's just because she hasn't been in as many episodes as we have. Right. Um, I do like some of the way it's phrased and how it speaks more eloquently and articulately than I do. <laughs> right, but it definitely feels... Written, like, it feels. Mm-hmm. It yeah. feels written. It feels like it feels like uh, the movie thing at the beginning of a movie. <laughs> yeah, 
it definitely has like that corporate script style, which yeah, uh, which is not what we go for. We just kind of you know speak no. off the cuff. Um, we, I do we, love like, we, the we reference have a, to the Universal Monster a, Universe. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> of all the things to reference, <laughs> yeah. Um, because I me, mean, just so our audience knows, we do have a quote unquote script, but it's more of an outline. Like with a, right. we have our own little prompts that we we occasionally read off of. But it's mostly more notes. Kind of like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so which is how podcast podcasts typically are. Um, so it is. It does just. F- I mean, just even as a podcast host, I'm just saying it feels weird reading off a script like this. <laughs> yeah. How do we play it up? How do we make it? How do we make it cool? Um, but yeah, <laughs> no, it was it was still interesting that like, you know, once I gave it the correct names uh, and like and like, you know, and uh, I just asked for a top a random topic. And you just like, oh, just talk about superheroes. And then, you know, gave us a little bit of that. I, did it I generate, learned. Sorry. Did what? it generate my name second or did you put my name in second? No, it just generated. It generated its own order. Hmm. Huh, weird. Interesting. Yeah, um, I don't know if that's by order uh, appearance. Like how many, like how many more po- like podcasts? Like I think, I think Kevin's probably been the most podcasts. Maybe, uh, yeah, because I've only, I think I've only missed like very few. Yeah, I, um, I would have thought Ryan's been more than me, but I guess it's me then. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, no, it's kind of, I, I, I mean, like the information that even in the content of the episode itself, I can't tell you I learned anything. Um. Because I oh, think no, it's definitely like, not informative. It's definitely just yeah. like talking to talk. That's what podcasting is. Yeah, exactly. Is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is content. So, like, would I recommend using ChatGPT to write your podcast episodes? No. However, nope. we did. We did get a, a interesting opening and interesting closer line. Um, I am interested for the video game one. That's our next one. But we'll get to that yeah. after the break. Yeah. No. Any Any other notes before we head to the break? Um. I. <clears throat> Go ahead, uh, go ahead, Jordan. Uh, like, yes, it wasn't edgy. Like, I think it just sounded a lot like, even though it was kind of nonsense almost, <laughs> it was, it felt more educational and like just too educational and rigid, right? Like, right. Like, honestly, the first couple of segments sounded like a mini history lesson, Kevin, that like you would kind of give us like background on something. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it wasn't bad. It's a very short podcast, if that's what it would be. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome um, to the five minute podcast. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the five minute, five minute, non informative, semi informative podcast. Um, it, it wasn't bad, but it's just it's not us. Like, I mean, I'll talk a little bit about it later down the line. But mm-hmm. it, it's I did like the the opening and closing was cool. Um, I like that it can suggest topics, but a script, no, thank you. Yeah, I felt like I was back in a booth just recording things. Ryan, what yeah, you think? I mean. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I just felt like there was no actual opinion to it. Like, <laughs> no, yeah. I, I mean, there, I mean, it's really just it literally is just facts. It's just like either facts or just stuff like there's oh, no yeah. critique. Yeah, there, there, there's nothing. It's just like, oh, yeah, there was a darker and gritty superheroes at one point, And then the MCU came along and changed everything. So what's going to happen now? We're going to have the universal monster in the universe. <laughs> and that's, and that's pretty much it. That's, that's all superhero film. Yeah. I mean, it just goes to show you that like Chad GBT as an as an a quote unquote AI, it, like it's not built to have an opinion or have its own original thoughts or anything. It is just piecing together words that it thinks sounds good together. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have an opinion yet, though. Dun, mm. dun, dun. Um, so no, start gas emotion. start gaslighting Chat GPT to have an opinion. <laughs> what do you think about this Chat, chat GPT? <laughs> <laughs> and it'll, it'll just respond with I like I am a software that does not have thoughts or anything like that. So <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to read up, read off our script about video games. Hey, everybody, my name is Jordan, and you've probably heard me on an episode or two. But did you know I also have a baking channel? Bluebell Bake is by the amateur baker for the amateur baker. On the channel, I'll be posting recipes, tips and tricks, and more so we can all learn to better our baking skills. You can find my channel on YouTube at Bluebell Bake, we're currently posting monthly, or on Instagram and TikTok, both at bluebell.bake. Come join our little community where no matter what happens, we keep on baking. Don't you wish there was a pop culture review site that appealed to cinephiles both professional and casual? Well, look no further than crprights.com. New content such as movie and TV reviews, film essays, and more are released every week by writers who crave for movies like every moviegoer craves for popcorn. CRP Rights is dedicated 
to making sure no one is wasting time or money where they shouldn't be. After all, you have to be able to buy your popcorn and eat it too. CRPRights.com. Casual reviews with purpose since 2018. Title, Video Games, Art or Entertainment, Opening the Music. Welcome to Committed Critics, the podcast where we can discuss all things related to film, television, and now video games. That's right, Kevin. Today's topic is one that's been debated for years. Are video games a art form or are they simply entertainment? Well, I think they're both. <laughs> there's certainly video games what out there. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to go for Steve Urkel. <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes, there are certainly <laughs> certainly video what games. What kind of Uncle Buck shit was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm gonna okay. die. I'm in tears. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there are certainly video games that are purely for entertainment, but there are also games that are works of art. I Zach's agree with Ryan. <laughs> Good I agree with Ryan. Video games can be just as artistic as movies or paintings. They have their own unique way of telling stories and immersing players in their worlds. I will point out, this is the first time it has given an opinion. Yeah, that's true. Perfect. It's probably pulling from articles and and uh, forums mm. for to to gather its opinion and it sees what's the most common opinion. Can it pull from like podcasts that are posted on like YouTube and shit? So like again, it's it's not connected to the internet, so oh, okay, it can't okay. like so it can't like grab links or like go search for something or anything like that. It's all about the data that's already implemented in, into the software. Got it. Got um. It. So how how that data is implemented, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's actually audio files of committed critics put in there. Um, but I, I but it did. It did tell me that, that, that it does have like a, a resource of articles and uh, and forums that it, it pulls information from. That's how you can like you can find interesting like things that may not be, you know, it helps you like gather research together. So you don't have to like scour the Internet for something. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, but what makes video game? What makes a video game a work of art? I think it's the same with any other art form. It has to have a message or a theme, and it has to be execu- executed in a way that's thought-provoking and impactful. Just like Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> and it has to be something that people can connect with emotionally. Games like The Last of Us, bullshit! Or uh, Life is Strange. Was, was <laughs> it really resonated with players because they tackle serious themes like loss, grief, and morality. Again, I will bullshit. S- I will say, of all the games that pulled, those two, <laughs> with the reasoning it gave... Not bad. Well, like, that's, not bad. those are those are the main two that people talk about. Like even like film critics do not give a shit about video games unless it's The Last of Us or Life is Strange. Like those are the oh, only two us. games they give a shit yeah, about. I'll I'll give it props on that. But I just mm. really I was like Last like of that, Us really. I would never miss it's, Last of Us. Well, it's just like it's just so basic information. Like of course you're gonna pull yeah. those titles. Like those are just the most mainstream video game titles for if you want to talk about how video games are an art form. I'm just shocked it didn't pull like popularity or like like Call of Duty has <laughs> really resonated with players. <laughs> that's that's not emotional morality. <laughs> Call of Duty taught a- me about the the cost, the price of war. <laughs> yeah, it's called a, uh, it's called microtransactions. <laughs> the only thing I'm impressed with is that it linked those games with those traits. That's what I'm impressed right. with. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, again, it's like those the, like in articles and forums, those will be linked together in the same in right. the same yeah. sentence. So like it's it is analyzing those being in the same sentence as a as, and it's a common thing. So of course it's like it makes it like in it, its own algorithm that makes sense to just kind of piece those things together. All right. And Go ahead. yep. Go ahead. <laughs> and let's not forget about the visual and audio aspects of video games. Some games are absolutely stunning with gorgeous landscapes and intricate character designs. And the music and sound effects can be just as important in setting the mood and enhancing the player's experience. All great points. But what about the <laughs> argument that video games are just mindless entertainment? I think that's a pretty outdated view. Fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are certainly games that are just meant to be fun and don't have any deeper meaning. But there are also games that can just be as intellectually s- stimulating as a good book or movie. 
And let's not for- forget that playing video games can actually be good for your brain. Studies have shown that playing games can improve cognitive function, problem-solving skills, and in creativity. Side effects include... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, exactly. Video games are a medium that's constantly evolving and pushing boundaries, just like film and television did before them. You really like pushing boundaries, according to Chat Chat GPT. Well, I am a fan. I know. Yeah, fair <laughs> yeah exact, exactly. Got to shake up the system. Uh, closing theme music plays. Oh, and that and that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to Committed Critics, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Leave us a review of, on your favorite <laughs> podcast app. And where, can, where can they follow us? <laughs> <laughs> and let us know in the comments what you think are what you think are video games a form of art or are they just entertainment? We'd love to hear your thoughts, but until next time, stay committed to your passions and keep critiquing the world around you. Stay committed. <laughs> stay committed and be a critic. Uh, I wouldn't recommend the last part of that. <laughs> Critiquing the world around you. That's fair. I agree. Uh, it's kind of funny I mean, that like, an AI wrote that. Yeah. Well, guys, I um, think this is our best episode. We should submit this somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> submit it to Cannes Film Festival. <laughs> submit it to the fucking streamies or webbies, whatever the fuck. The, yeah, the streamies. The, yeah, the streamies. I don't know. Hey, this is streamies. Um, I haven't heard about that in a while. Um... Yeah, no, that's, I, I like how this one isn't as segmented. Mm-hmm. Um, again, like, like it has a quote-unquote opinion, but it's pulling from the most common uh, stories and, and uh, that's in articles and forums. And, like, it's finding that pattern and tell, giving us the most consistent pattern. Yeah, I think it, I, this, this one screams, um, you know, you walk into a GameStop and has those IGN videos playing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This has the same vibe. Oh yeah, like, this I definitely agree. feels feels like those I, IGN promo videos. <laughs> They're playing a GameStop where it's like Breath of the Wild is an open world. <laughs> if you see it, you can go to. Okay, cool. Thanks, GameStop. It's almost like it's like the IGN meets like when news anchors have to talk to each other to fill time. Uh, don't, <laughs> yeah. even get, don't even get me started on that. Right? Like, like, yeah. yeah, like the like the, the little banter that they're supposed to do. Like, I remember doing that for River Region. It was like, yeah, like, yeah, Ryan, it was stormy out today. Speaking of storms, let's go over to, to whoever. Weather. <laughs> to weather. So that, that's kind of how it felt with the flow of it. I like this one better. Um, mm-hmm. But again, it's it's still... I think it flowed better than the other one. Like I, I felt more like a conversation than the um, superheroes one did. But at the same time, I don't know, it still felt a little rigid. I'm impressed that it gave like gave us an opinion. Like mm-hmm. we actually get to agree and like I agree with you, Ryan. Or I think this. Hmm. Yeah. It yeah. I it still definitely felt more balanced. Right. I still wouldn't say I learned something from this. Oh God. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like this is not saying that like all of our episodes are purely educational you will learn from anyone you pick but like this is this is definitely a script where like if you're wanting to make a show that where you teach people something this you this is not the software to use like it'll no, no. like it's like that like i found jet gpt to be extremely helpful with um finding certain soft like third party software mm-hmm. like what what is considered like the best third party software for the things i'm looking for and it, go, and it collects data from articles and forums about like, you know, like, oh, here's like a list top five that people are talking about, stuff like that. Um, or like if you have a like a specific technical problem that you don't know how to phrase it in Google to get the result, mm-hmm. like ChatGPT would be a good resource to kind of like ask, like ask it a weird question, that troubleshooting question that you think might only apply to you. And it'll just look all through its database and find something that like might actually work for you it uh, at it's, least get you better results than google it's a better google that's really what it is uh, well, I, I it okay. doesn't it doesn't replace google no it, it no, just doesn't kind replace of like, it doesn't replace it it's just more spe- sorry it's not better google more specific yeah. google yeah yeah, yeah i w- it's just kind of like um because it's just how it, it's just it understands the human link the english language better than the yeah. google search engine does <laughs> mm-hmm. um Google just basically looks at keywords and tries to find it throughout the internet. Um, but uh, this is um, definitely something where it would be like, oh, like my computer won't turn on or like or like when I click on this thing, this thing happens and you just, you know, 
you know, you phrase it in, in chat GPT and see if it get a good starting point. It'll at least save you like a good, like 30 minutes to an hour of research. Um, you just get, get it pretty instantly. And then it gives you, provides the information a pretty, like, uh, pretty clear way, I would say, um, where like, it just explains things in layman's terms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, any, any other thoughts on that script? No, it's, I think, I mean, just go on to the yeah. final thoughts. Yeah. What are your final thoughts on this episode of uh, Chat GPT? Fun, funny. That's a fun challenge. Um, I find this hilarious and ironic. I literally typed out in our little outline. I find it funny how <laughs> 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 grammatically correct AI speaks. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, no, that's correct. That's actually correct. Yeah, it is. That's why I changed Sorry. it. Sorry. Yeah. I thought I was missing. Like I missed a verb in there. Nope. I'm like, oh, man, no. that's hilarious. Nope, that's grammatically correct. Hell yeah. Fuck you, AI. <laughs> <laughs> how about you jordan um it was fun like but again it just it felt very structured and rigid like i could see us using chat gpt for podcast topic ideas just like things that maybe when we like these in between challenge episodes like what are we going to do um but i think the perk of having humans at least for now before it develops if it develops is that we can add our own cadence and humor that ai just can't right now oh yeah for sure like you know Ryan Ryan played around with his voice. We had our little uh, cuts in the middle where we kind of like talked about, <laughs> kind of like laughed at what was going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it's like uh, AI cannot figure, will not be able to figure out like what makes people laugh at the moment. Um, right. I mean, like it could it could learn the structure of jokes, and I think mean, ChatGPT does understand the structure of jokes, but like it still can't. It's just going to re- regurgitate uh, jokes that are, have already been done. Um, for the, I mean, for those of you interested in learning more about AI, um, I'll have a couple videos linked in the description. Uh, there's one call from a, from a, a one video f- recently made by the YouTube channel Ans- Answer in Progress, where the host of the channel uh, programs an AI to learn parkour while she herself learns parkour and see who can learn the fastest. And then, like it has it does it does an interesting job showing what the how AI thinks versus how humans think. Uh, in in those kind of situations um and then there's a video by adam conover called ai is bs which kind of he kind of goes into detail about like how ai is marketed isn't actually how ai technically works um and like how like there's like this for some reason there's like this new new tech bro trend of like trying to get the best ai out there uh, as soon as possible like google came out with their ai called bard and it failed instantly like (laughs) Because it it was connected because it was an AI that was connected to the internet and almost and like within twenty four hours it became extremely racist. <laughs> mm. Jeez. Um. But then and then Microsoft even had like an AI uh, Twitter account for a bit, but then they had to shut it down because it instantly became a Nazi <laughs> because of Jesus. Jeez. <laughs> because of everything that because it was just it just read everything on Twitter. Let it form its own opinions based on like what was the most commonly talked about thing on Twitter, and apparently it was Nazis. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. It, so those videos are linked in description. Uh, uh, I, I think ChatGPT is a really interesting uh, development, and I'm interested to see where it goes. Um, but it is not. We are not in the process of uh, AI is going to take over the world kind of deal. Um, However, though, there's there there is an issue where a lot of AI companies are firing their AI ethics uh, departments uh, oh. because, yeah, no, Adam Conover goes over this uh, where it's like because they're in such a rush to get the next big AI thing out there, they're ignoring all the ethics that goes with AI. Uh, so they're trying to be like uh, so like literally anything, anyone that stands in their way of like saying, no, don't do this. They just get fired immediately. Thank you, Elon Musk. You you really <laughs> developed a great culture in the tech industry. Um, so yeah, we'll be back in two weeks what? to talk about Tron and Tron Legacy. I didn't get a good if you want to hear opinion. the rest of our thoughts over, about on other topics, tune into our hey, full hey, episode hey, over hey, on hey, Patreon. Hey. Yeah, yeah. You cut off the black guy. Let him talk. Oh my god. Oh, what? I didn't hear him. <laughs> I never got to. <laughs> the oh, I was like, yeah. I was like yeah, damn. All right. Well, I guess I'll just head out. <laughs> All right. All right. What's your final thoughts, Ryan? Uh, I was going to point out that, um, th- so I've thought about this when I, when we were doing this episode, but this reminded me of, there's a VeggieTales episode called The Wonderful World of Autotainment, where they oh. basically, like, have the entire episode writ, like, 
two robots like do the jokes and do all the stuff for it and everything. And so it's basically just randomized like comedy. Uh-huh. And they point out as the episode goes along that it devolves more and more into chaos because it doesn't know actual comedy. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, that's what this kind of reminded me of is that we like we're, we're tr- it looks good on the surface and it looks terrible when you actually read it out loud. Like, right. Especially when you have people like reading like it just sounds very just awful. Yeah, because it, 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 AI cannot read a room. Yeah, I can't read a room. It doesn't have emotion until, you know, Ultron comes around and kills us all. But until then, <laughs> I, yeah. Also, Chad GBT, don't ever make me say the word is Last of Us again. <laughs> Remember five minutes ago when Kevin just tried to cut off Ryan and silence him? <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> Silencing the black man. I get how it is. God damn it. I, I've been Kevin. AI all along. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Ke- Kevin... I'm sorry. This is the end of our friendship right here and now. Thanks, Jack, Jack GBT. <laughs> make a video called AI ruined my friendship. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what happened here. You have millions of views. Uh, if you want to hear the rest of our thoughts about other topics, tune to our full episode over on Patreon. Link to the, that is below in the description. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Committed Crits, YouTube Committed Critics, TikTok at Committed Critics, and special thanks to our current patrons, Davey Peppers from Game Mechanics, Ryan Kolokaski from Ryan Plays Drums, Andy Phillips from Andy Phillips, Jody Wright, Devin Vonderheide, and Brandon Morales. And we'll see you in two weeks. Bye.